Hi there, and welcome back to The Lisa Nichols Show, where we spend time coming together to inspire, educate, transform ourselves together. This is the place that we come so that we can believe and we can get the tools to actually achieve what we want, the life. Look, I got a guest with me, a special guest, my boy, Matt Gill, your boy, Ooh. Matt Gill. So, so often, Matt and I are on live stages together. We travel the world together. Yeah. Um, and Matt's always like in the background when I'm recording the shows for you, Matt's a major, major part of the team to make sure that I hear your voice, to make sure that you hear my voice and that we do it. So we're doing a special show today. You know, we're real big on asking you to comment. Right. And so I'm super excited about what's happening today. And then on today's episode, we're actually taking some of the comments and the questions that you guys have been asking. What I love was just spending some time and reading through all of the different mm. um, action steps that people have been taking as a result of the show. The the new awareness that has come as a result of the show. Yes. The, 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 just the new oxygen that mm. has been created and, mm. and life that people are breathing, that you are breathing mm. as a result of this show. Oxygen. And, that, and you know, you say that word because you've read it so much. Right. Like, it's beautiful to read the words, this was oxygen for me. I need the number one comment, comment that we hear people say is I needed this right now today. Right. So if you wrote that, we've read it. <laughs> and 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 people all around the world wrote the exact same thing on many many different episodes as right. you. So I'm excited about today because today um, the lesson really isn't from me. The lesson is going to be born out and organically come out of the question that you ask on behalf of you. So today we just went through some of the questions and some of the comments, and we want to share some of those and get a little bit of insight on uh, some of the questions that people are asking. So if you have a question, make sure you send it in because we'll do more episodes like this. If you like it, we're going to give you more of it where your, an your questions are being answered live for the world to benefit from the answer. So our first question that uh, has come in is from Style by Mercy. And she says, um, my intuition, this actually comes from the episode, Trust Your Intuition, which is a really, really juicy one. Like if you look at the comments from, from that particular show, so many people really resonated with, this, with that message and really just touched their soul. And she wrote in, my intuition told me to leave my stressful job um, at a law firm where I wasn't happy and become a wardrobe stylist. So I put in my two weeks and I took the leap. I feel so much better mentally, but my chatter keeps saying, how can you leave a job when you don't have another job lined up? So how do you manage your self-talk and that chatter um, when you're making bold movements into something unknown? So this is for anyone who you recognize that while your intuition is speaking, your chatter is speaking at the same time. And how do you know which one is going at one time, any particular time? And how do you turn up your intuition and turn down your chatter? So Style by Mercy, one of the things that I have always done ever since I figured this out was I recognize what my chatter is saying and I actually give, I actually give my chatter validation because your chatter is like a warning to us. It, your chatter, fear storms, fear is our friend. Fear isn't our enemy. Fear is as relevant and as necessary as any other emotion. Compassion, love, mm -hmm. all of those emotions that we welcome. Right. Fear is just like any of those, but fear is fueling you for to go get more answers. Fear is telling you, we don't have enough information. We don't right. have a mentor. We don't have a coach. We don't have, like fear is telling you to get something because when you go get the thing you need, when you give yourself what you need, you mitigate the fear. So when the chatter comes up, ask yourself, what is the chatter telling me I need to go do and I need to say, and I need to make happen? What's happening? The chatter is telling me something. Right. So in this particular case, chatter is telling you financial stability. Mm. Chatter is telling you, I don't want you to compromise your lifestyle. I don't want your car to go away. I don't want your home to go away. Right. I don't want your, you know, whatever that thing is you do for an outlet to go away. So that chatter is telling you something. So you don't eliminate the chatter. Mm -hmm. You listen to the chatter and mitigate the chatter. You don't let the chatter drive. See, right. that's, the, that's really your question. How do you not let the chatter drive? 
That's that's right there. Yes. It's just a mind shift change. Like we run from fear. Yes. But yet when, yes. when you say that it's speaking to us. Yeah. Like that's key. Yeah. Like, fear fear is is really informing you. Mm -hmm. it, it's not the enemy. Oh, I'm right. afraid I'm not going to move. No, no, no. Don't be afraid and not move. Be afraid and seek what you're afraid of. So mm. you can go minimize it into the nothingness that it always was. Because fear wow. is a created conversation about the future that hasn't happened yet. Right. I'm going to say that again because I know <laughs> that's kind of wild. Fear is a conversation. You're projecting what you think might happen. Oh, I don't want to get in a relationship. I might get hurt. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't want to start a business. I might lose my money. Right. Oh, I don't want to because I might. You're just projecting what you think would happen. Now, how do you take what you think would happen and put in place the strategy to make sure it doesn't? Right. So, style by mercy, mm -hmm. right? Stop at mercy. If you were being coached by me prior to quitting <laughs> the law firm, you've already done it now. Great. Let's make it work. Right. However, if you're being coached by me prior to um, quitting the, your job, I would have coached you the way I've coached hundreds of students mm -hmm. to say, yeah, if you don't want to be where you are, let's not be there. Right. However, let's make a strategy so that you can fund your future. Right. before you leave. It will require you to be patient. It will require you to work and do some things you've never done before, say some things you've never said before, so you can be the man or the woman you've always known yourself to be, right. right? And so I say, how do we buy your freedom? So I'm not sure if you've heard me tell the story about how I wrote myself a check mm -hmm. when I worked at LA Unified School District. I wrote myself a check every two weeks. My first check was $110, because that's all I could afford to write myself a check for, and every two weeks, for three and a half years, I wrote myself a check. And in the memo line of every check, I said, funding, funding my, my freedom, right. right? Funding my freedom, funding my dream. You know better than <laughs> me. I was like, buy my freedom, funding right. my dream. I was funding my dream. And I didn't know even know what the dream was. Right. I just knew I needed to maintain a lifestyle for mm -hmm. my son and I. And so the way you mitigate fear and chatter is you put in place a strategy a solid, doable strategy. And it's gonna require you to do things you've never done before, write down things you've never done before, and the strategy in and of itself is gonna make you shake. Right. Right. But the strategy gets you excited because the fear begins to reduce with the strategy. Mm. And so chatter comes up when you don't have enough answers. And you're looking for answers, but you're not giving them to yourself. You have, you really have a lot of the answers. You may not have access to them at the top of mind, but you can go get them. I was someone who didn't have any financial background whatsoever other than I made money, I spent money, and money burned my pocket like it burned my mama's pocket. Mm -hmm. And, 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 right? right? Unhealthy relationship to money. But I wanted to, I wanted to reduce the fear of stepping out into my future of being a speaker. Okay, how do I do that? I knew that I could live on $31,000 a year Mm -hmm. And so I saved until I got to $31,000 a year for two years. Right. And when I got to $62,000, I quit my day job. Right. And I knew I had two years of my stability intact to make this thing called a speaking career work. And so Style by Mercy, um, we need to get a strategy in place. Mm -hmm. So your creative side, you're a stylist. So you're a creator. You're going to have to build the linear structure um, side of your brain, right. which mine wasn't developed at all right. when I started speaking. I'm a creator, I'm an artist, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a spoken word artist, and yet I need to be fiscally responsible for my future. Right. So I had to learn what did that look like. And so go replace your fear with information and with a strategy and it will reduce into the nothingness that it always was. I love that. Fear for information. Yes. Fear. Uh, replace awesome. fear for yes. information. Yep. That is key. And Lakaya says, um, she said, first off, Lisa, I love you. Um, mm. God has literally placed you in my life and you are the answer to my prayers. Um, my life has been transformed, absolutely changing and amazing in the past four months, but I'm scared. Can this stay? How do you overcome the fear of being able to see success? So when success is new, there's greatness in your life and it's something that you're unfamiliar with. Mm -hmm. Living in the fear of losing it again or sure. not having it. So I always say, are you building your dreams on cement or sinking sand? Mm. So what does building your dream on cement look like? 
and what does building on sinking sand look like? So when you have fast success and it's that hustle mentality and it's and you don't have a, a, a clear path on how you got there, and more importantly, a clear path on how you're gonna get there again and again <laughs> and, and again, again <laughs> and one more again. <laughs> when you don't have that, then all of a sudden you become worried. Right. So I would say Lakipa. Yes. I would say Lakipa. What's the strategy that got you there? Go back and track how did you get there over the last four months. When you're successful, you leave clues. Success leaves clues. Mm -hmm. Find out what are the clues of what you did, what can you rinse and repeat over and over again, and more importantly, what can you up level to increase your chances of success every time you do it. You're afraid of if it can last because you haven't outlined the system that got you there. Right. Now, I gotta tell you sis, if you got there by luck, then I don't know how it's gonna last. Right. But if you got there by something you did, something you thought, a behavior that you kept reproducing, consistency that you lived inside of, action that you stayed committed to, right. great. Go document the, the mindset, the action steps, the consistency, and rinse and repeat. And then get a tribe around you. I think this is a pretty <laughs> good tribe. Right. Get a tribe around you, but a more intimate tribe as well. This is your online tribe. Right. Get a live tribe. Step onto our campus. Right. Come see me live. Build a community of people to hold you accountable, not to what you've done in the past, not even to the woman you are, but more importantly, to the woman that you're becoming. Because right. when you have people around you pulling you, and this is so important, when you're out in front of everybody, you can even slow down. I remember I went to college and I ran track in mm -hmm. high school and I was a state champion in high school. I went to college and I ran and I won every event for one year. I was undefeated for a year, but I didn't improve in my track numbers and my, and my um, scores at all. I had no improvement because I was out in front. Right. I made no improvement. But man, when I start running against those super crazy fast girls right. where I was behind, I, in fourth place, got better than I was when I was in first right. place. So who's that tribe that's around you who's standing two to 10 feet taller than you that will hold you accountable to the man or the woman that you're becoming? Right. Tell them what you wanna create in the world in the next three years, five years, in your financial life, in your relationship life, in your family life. Tell them who, what that looks like and then keep a track record on how you, you got, got here that. and what can you do to get you there. And then stay in action and don't be the best person inside your camp. If so, don't leave the camp. Right. Just get a second camp. Right. So you're talking strategy mm -hmm. and accountability. Those and movement. And movement. Got movement. It. Strategy, movement, accountability. In that in that order. Strategy, mm -hmm. movement, accountability. accountability. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. So Emmanuel asks, hey Lisa, I love your show. Mm -hmm. And he says, can you go more in depth on what it means to show the world how it should treat you? Ooh, of course, Emmanuel. I love mm -hmm. this topic. Um, and and I love you too, thank you for your acknowledgement. So I, I, I first said this, I first heard myself say this in 2007 when I was had the honor of being on the Oprah Winfrey Show. Mm. And I remember saying, it just kind of fell out, right? And then it was one of the highlights, so I kept seeing it replayed everywhere and it was great that it was replayed everywhere because I kept seeing it again and right. I kept hearing it again <laughs> for myself. You know, you say something like, oh, right. that sounds good. And then you hear it back and go, Ooh, I needed to hear that, right? right? It was one of those things. And it was, the world is following your example mm -hmm. of how the world gets to treat you. And it's your responsibility to give the world the best example possible. The way you treat yourself is the way I'm gonna fall in order and treat you as well. Mm -hmm. So if you don't give yourself any rest, now I want you, as you're hearing me say this, I want you to just kinda raise your hand or comment and you know, right. make a note if you feel your truth popping up. Cause right. this is one of those things where the truth just kind of opens up little by little and you go, whoa, I didn't know that that was my behavior right. or God, thank God I've come a long way. So if you don't give yourself rest, mm -hmm. then the world will think you don't need rest. And the world being your family, your friends, if you say yes to everything, mm -hmm. then the world thinks, right? <laughs> then the world thinks that you should say yes, yes to everything. Right. All of a sudden, your yes actually has less value because you give it away so often. This was a Ooh, big aha. That's, yeah. That right there is deep. Man, 
I, cause I'm a yes girl. I, I, you know, I used to be a yes girl. Like I just, cause I want to be liked. Right. I want to be liked and loved by everybody. So I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And I give it away. Right. And my grandmother taught me, she said, baby, if you want your yes to have any value, you need to become more comfortable with your no. <sighs> that right there. <laughs> and, 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 That's a tweetable moment. <laughs> right, right, if you want your yes to become right. more valuable, if you tweet it, give Blanche Houston the credit. Right. I can't even take the credit. I, I, I didn't. I thought no meant, meant you're being mean. Right. No, no means I'm being responsible at times mm. because I say yes even when I don't want to say yes. So I'm actually being unfair to the people I'm saying yes to because no one wants your resentful yes. Right. No one needs or wants your overburdened yes. Mm -hmm. Like if they love you, they want your grateful yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to do it. Right. And if it's, if you're not excited to do it or there's not a, even just a neutral feeling, mm -hmm. then don't give the yes up because it's unfair to you and it's unfair to them. Right. And so teaching the world how to treat you, you know, has everything to do with how are you holding you in esteem first? Mm -hmm. How do you love and honor you? You take that extra five minutes in the shower just because you need that breath? Do you turn the lights out at 10 o'clock at night because you want to get eight hours sleep? Because if you're not willing to give you eight hours sleep, then I'm going to call you at midnight. Right. I'm going to call you at five in the morning because I know you up. Right. Because you get, you, you you're get, always going to be the you one gave that me, answers. You gave right. me that doorway. Right. And so learning how to teach people how to treat you, it, the prerequisite to that is what does falling madly in love with you look like? What does, and when I had to, when I discovered what falling madly in love with Lisa looked like, right. and it's not a braggadocious, ego-centered, push the world away, it wasn't that. It was simply elevating and loving me the way that I want to be loved, giving me, being the first in line right. to treat me well. And what would be the steps for somebody who says, I can't love myself yet? Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So cutting the shackles of blame, shame, guilt, regret, and anger. Say that again. Right. Cutting the shackles of guilt, blame, shame, and anger. Um, being willing to forgive yourself. Because right. if you can't love yourself yet, it's because you're holding yourself hostage to something. Right. Something you did or something you didn't do. A time where you stood up too fast, did too much, you loved too soon, you let go too soon, you stayed in it too long, mm -hmm. you abused yourself, you abused someone else, something. You're holding yourself hostage to something. Right. And so I recommend that you do mirror work. I'm real big on mirror work. Listen, I'm a transformational coach, so I'm going to always have you do something. Right. So get in the mirror. And there. Th this is a longer process, but I'm just going to have you do this one. Look yourself in your eye, say your name, and say, I forgive you for. And have seven different endings to it. And you might not even be audible, because when I first did it, I was like, Lisa, Lisa <laughs> I, I forgive you for. That was one of those, like, ugly cries. Right. That was it's ugly not coming cry. down, though, right? <laughs> but that, that, right, right. It was one of those right. cries. And I, and, and I kept forgiving myself for the same thing. Right. Seven different things. Every day I say the same seven things I said the day before mm. until I felt like healing had come. Mm -hmm. I did it for six months every day, every day. I added two other sentences to it, but that was one of the sentences. I did it for every day, Matt, because I had a lot to forgive Lisa for. Right. I had just gotten out of an abusive relationship. And I felt like I would not only endangered my life, but I endangered my three-year-old son's life. Mm -hmm. And that felt unforgivable. Mm -hmm. And I was about to sentence myself to a very dim, dark future. Mm -hmm. Now, I would have been smiling. I would have had some level of success because I, I can produce in the midst of my own shame. Mm -hmm. You know how we're smart enough, we're brilliant enough no, to be right. able to try to trick everybody else. I knew I can trick everyone else. I'd mastered my smile right. in front of my tears. I'd mastered that. And so I wanted my smile to be true and authentic. Mm -hmm. And so I just forgave myself every day. I forgave myself again for the same thing I forgave myself for the day before. Until one day I got up and I said, Lisa, looked in the mirror, I forgive you for. And I went to say that thing and it didn't come up. Hmm. And I realized that the forgiveness was already there. Right. So thank you, Emmanuel, for the question. That is juicy. So I want to let you know, um, you have... I know one of our, our favorite, one of your favorite things to do is to go in and read all the comments and you get to hear a lot of the love. And, and in closing, um, I just want to acknowledge you and, and uh, since I got to spend some, some great quality time reading the comments, um, the effect um, that you've had mm -hmm. on people, the inspiration that you've been, the what I kept hearing over and over again 
was this was the perfect message at the perfect time. Mm. And had you not boldly gone Mm. where other people wouldn't dare go, you said the things that other people wouldn't say. You faced things that other people wouldn't face. You're trying to make me cry. Lives wouldn't be touched. And so I just want to read to you just a few things that some people have said because I get the pleasure of working with the Lisa Nichols that everybody gets (laughs) to see. But I also know the friend and the woman that is Lisa Nichols. You know sometimes how I have to crawl to the camera. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're not saying. Right. And sometimes I have to pray myself to a stand. And sometimes I can't even pray. You got to pray me to a stand. That's what he's not saying. (laughs) And so as your friend. My partner in creation. And the one that's going to be standing here by your side. (laughs) I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you on behalf of your team. On behalf of the leaders that stand beside you. On behalf of the people that watch this episode and catch their breath. One of the most profound statements that somebody had said is um, Frida, and we'll close with her. Well, Frida says, this show is my oxygen Mm -hmm. to my lungs in a time of swimming in deep waters of uncertainty and questions. This is exactly what I needed this morning. Mm -hmm. And so on behalf of all of us, I say thank you. It is my honor because I am Matt. I am Frida. Mm. I am Emmanuel. I am every single person who's watched, witnessed, didn't have the didn't have the energy to type anything or make a comment because they're still trying to catch their breath. I am the person who's soaring and doesn't want to feel guilty that they're soaring while their family might not be soaring. I am you. And I'm grateful that God has chosen to use me in spite of all of my my ding-dong decisions. I don't teach from a mountaintop. I teach as I'm walking up the mountain with you. And I'm grateful. And I'm not going anywhere. And if I am a part of your oxygen, your backpack, your power boost, your get back up, your sit down and breathe for a minute, then I'm honored. I don't take that. I don't take that opportunity for granted so thank you for being thankful because I too am grateful mm-hmm. I love you okay. <laughs> this is why I do this work mm. this is so rewarding I, I don't know if there's very many things that you can do as a lifestyle where you literally get back as much as you give right you know what I mean yeah This is one of those things and I'm grateful for it. So remember, this is not a monologue. This is Mm -hmm. not just about us. If nothing else you can tell this episode, just drives home the value of you giving us your comments. Right. What was today's episode for you? What did it make you think about? What was the aha? What was the perfect question? What What was that part of the question that you needed to have asked for you? And more importantly, what part of the answer are you going to run with? What does it mean to do that? I want you to be willing to share this. Share this with your community, right? Mm. You know, I I know you share it with your community all the time. I went over over a friend of mine's house the other night and um, for um, a uh, celebration. And about 12 people there that I didn't know all said, oh my God, I love your work. Such and such shared it with me. Mm -hmm. And I went, wow, they got to be inspired because their friend shared it, so share. Many, many of you guys have actually said, I stumbled across you and I found you in there and I'm so grateful. 
imagine what it would be like yes if you were to refer this to your friends yeah who need this message yeah. who need this specific answer to the question that they've been looking for right what i love about inspiration is that it always fits mm -hmm. it's never too small it's never too big it's always just right so please subscribe if you haven't become a subscriber you haven't realized yet that this is your home mm -hmm. and we are your tribe and i am your sister matt's your brother in prosperity and in possibility and we mean it when we say we believe in you and, and we, we love, love you, you. Because we do. See you soon.